Hello everybody, welcome back to my course on how to build your own blog using Laravel and Voyager. In this first part we will just set up our server. In order to do that I will be using DigitalOcean. So if you go to digitalocean.com or if you click on the link below the video, you would get $100 free credit that you could use to spin up your own servers. Creating an account with DigitalOcean is really simple. All you need to do is fill up the form here or sign up with Google or your GitHub account. As I already have an account, I'll just click on the sign in button, which will take me to my DigitalOcean control panel. Then in order to get started, all you need to do is either hit this get started with a droplet button or from the drop down menu here, just click on droplets. This will take you to a page where you will be able to create your first droplet. The first thing that you need to choose is your operating system. You can choose between a variety of operating systems, including Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS. In my case, I would just go for Ubuntu 18.04. Then the next thing that you would need to choose is the size of your droplet. I would just go for this two gigabyte of RAM and one CPU option. Then if you scroll down, the next thing that you need to choose is the data center location where your droplet would be created. I would just go for Frankfurt as this is the one nearest to me. Further down, there are some extra options that you could add. I would just add the extra monitoring. This would give us some nice graphs in our digital ocean control panel for our memory usage and things like that. Then the most important thing that we need to add is our SH key, which would basically allow us to connect to our server. If you don't have an SH key already, then you can follow the steps here. It's really well documented. No matter if you're using Mac or Windows, there's steps for every operating system. Once you have your SH key, just add it there and then select it. I'll just go select all of my SH keys. Then if I scroll a little bit down, the last thing that I need to choose is my host name. That's basically the name of our server. Then another option actually is to enable backups. I would definitely recommend enabling them. This is a good security measure and in case that anything goes wrong with your site or server and you're unable to fix it, then you could just restore to a point back in time when your site was working. After that, hit the create droplet button and then after a few seconds, your droplet would be up and running. Then you can click on the droplet name and inspect the different options. For example, you can access the droplet via the web console. You can even resize the droplet and add more resources with just a click of a button. I would suggest just going through some of the other options as well. After that, copy your IP address and go to your terminal. I'm on a Mac, so I'll be using the built-in terminal to access the droplet via SSH. If you're on a Windows machine, you could use a terminal like Putty, for example. I would put the link in the video description for more information. Then just type SSH followed by the username, which is root in this case, then add and paste your IP. Here, just say yes. And in my case, I have a passphrase for my SSH key, so I would just type my passphrase and hit enter. In a second, you will be connected to your server. The next thing that we want to do is to do our initial server setup. Let's start by adding a new user. You can do that with the add user command followed by the username that you want to use. Here, just enter your password. Make sure to use a secure one, then retype it again. For the following options, we can just press enter and finally just hit yes. Next, we would like to make our user an administrator. We can do that by adding our user to the service group. To do that, just run user mod, then hyphen ag, sudo, which is the sudo group, and then your username. If you hit enter, now your user would have an admin access. Next, we would like to enable our firewall for security reasons. We will use the Ubuntu firewall. So let's go ahead and allow the access to open SSH. That way, once we enable the firewall, our connection would not be dropped. You can enable it by typing UWF, which stands for Ubuntu Firewall, then allow, and then the name of the application. Hit enter. Okay, then type 
Ubuntu Firewall again, Enable. This is how we would enable the Ubuntu Firewall. You would be asked if you would like to proceed, otherwise your connection might be dropped, but as we already allowed OpenSSH, this should be okay and our connection would not get dropped. Then if you type UWF status, you'll be able to see that the firewall is active and you can see that the connections to OpenSSH are allowed from anywhere. Next, we would like to be able to SSH with our new user rather than using the root user, which would be much more secure. To do that, we need to copy the authorized keys from this SSH folder. Currently, if you list the contents of your user's home folder, you will be able to see that there is no such folder called .ssh. So let's go ahead and create one. You need to run mkdir, which basically creates a directory, then followed by the path to your user's home directory. So in my case, it's slash home slash sami slash .ssh. If I hit enter, that would create a directory. Then I would just want to copy the outright keys from the roots.ssh folder to the users.ssh folder. To do that, I would just type cp.ssh followed by the outright keys file, then followed by the path to the destination folder. If I hit enter, that will basically copy the file. Now, if I list the contents of the folder again, as you can see, now we have the authorized keys file copied over to the .sh folder of my user. One thing that we need to adjust is the ownership of the file. At the moment, you can see that it's owned by root. So if we try to SSH with our SAMI user, it would not work. So let's go ahead and adjust that. I'll just use the chown command, which basically changes the ownership of the file or a folder, followed by my username and a column then the path to the actual file that we want to change the ownership of. Let's put a hyphen capital R here. That way we will change the ownership of the folder and the file inside it. If we list the contents of the folder again, now we can see that the file is owned by the user Sami. And if we list the contents of the home folder, we can actually see that the .ssh folder is also owned by Sami. Okay, now we are ready to test our new user. Let's exit the current SSH session and let's SSH with our SAMI user. To do that, just change the root username with your actual username that we've just created. Then hit enter and enter your passphrase if you have one. And sure enough, you will be logged in as your SAMI user. Now let's go ahead and test if we actually have sudo access. To do that, just type sudo apt update. Then enter your password. And as you can see, it's working. And this is going to be pretty much it for this video. Now we have a server and we've done our initial server configuration. In the next video, we are going to go ahead and install Nginx, PHP, and MySQL so that we have an environment ready to deploy our Laravel application. I hope you like it so far. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the next video when it comes out.